composed by the great Vaishnava devotee and saint Thakur Bhakti Vinod. Thakur Bhakti Vinod composed more than 100 songs. Thakur Bhakti Vinod was a magistrate in the British government when the British were ruling India. It is said that he appeared on the call of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has been described as a special energy of the Supreme Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Kali Yoga was getting more and more degraded and it was necessary for a powerful personality to appear. So the Lord sent Thakur Bhakti Vinod. Thakur Bhakti Vinod was educated as a magistrate. And as a magistrate, when he was posted in Jagannath Puri, when the British government realized that Thakur Bhakti Vinod was also a great devotee of the Lord, they also made him in charge of the Jagannath Puri temple in India. You've heard of the Jagannath Puri temple, all of you? Very famous. So, when Thakur Bhakti Vinod became in charge, he regulated the deity offerings and he made sure the temple was very clean. The Thakur Bhakti Vinod showed how one could practice Krishna consciousness in any situation. He was a family man living at home. And he had 12 children. And he made all his children into pure devotees. And the greatest of them all was? So I'll first explain the song which we sang. And then tell you if there's time, some more stories of Thakur Bhakti Vinod. Want to hear some stories of Thakur Bhakti Vinod? But let's see. I have to apologize. I could not come at 6 o'clock because I just got back from Riga and Kalnas. And so a lot of work to do. So sorry for being a little late. So in this song, Thakur Bhakti Vinod has given a very powerful message for all of you devotees of this Krishna conscious movement. I understand that today is the last day of the Lord Nursing of their marathon. So all Sankhya's and devotees must be very well acquainted with the meaning of this song because this song has a very powerful message as regarding the role of a Vaishnava. Vaishnava is just not a religious person. Vaishnava is a compassionate savior of humanity. Therefore the Vaishnava is Paradukha Dukhi. Paradukha Dukhi means Seeing others in distress, he also becomes distressed. So Thakur Bhaktivinoda opens this wonderful song by saying, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gora Chanda Bole, Kota Nidra Jao Maya, Pisha Chira Kole. So he says, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is calling all of you. What is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saying? Please wake up, wake up, wake up of conditioned soul. Jeev, Jeev being Jeevatma, living entity. Jago in Bengali means to wake up. It says, Kota Nidha Jao Maya. Since time the memorial, you have been sleeping in the lap of this witch known as Maya. So how long will you sleep in the lap of this witch known as Maya? This is Thakka Bhaktivinoda's poser. The living entity has been transmigrating to the different cycles of birth and death since time's immemorial. You cannot even trace when this cycle started. Many times people say, oh, when did I fall from the spiritual world? And sometimes people would ask Prabhupada this question. So Prabhupada would say, it doesn't matter when you fell. The important thing is you get out of it. Just like when there's a fire, your immediate need is to put the fire off, not to first launch an investigation. How did the fire start? So the living entity has been, has been suffering in the various cycles of birth and death in time immemorial. In the Prima Vivartha, it is said... Krishna bhai muka hana bhoga vancha kare, vikatasta maya kare, japatiya dhare. That's the moment the living entity, when he's residing in the spiritual world, he decides to become an enjoyer like God. He has to leave the spiritual world and come to the material world. So the living entity. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita is explained that just like in an ocean, if we throw a ball in the ocean, so the waves of the ocean, they will toss the ball. Sometimes the ball goes to the right, sometimes it goes to the left. So similarly, the living entity is being tossed by the material waves taking birth in different forms of life. So he says, Vajibo bhulia eshe samsara vitare bhulia rohile tumi avidya bhare. Avidya means ignorance. You have forgotten the promise that you had made to the Lord when you were in the mother's womb. And having forgotten this promise, you have become a victim of ignorance and have got deeply entangled in miseries of life. The Vaishnava devotee of the Lord works to elevate or works to eliminate the miseries of life. The Vaishnava only has one anxiety, how to stop people from sinning because he knows that as long as they sin, they're going to be entangled in the miseries of birth and death experience nothing but pain. 
So therefore, the Bhagavad Gita was spoken. Why? One of the reasons, the main reason was the Bhagavad Gita was spoken so that to give us knowledge by which we can eliminate our misery. So therefore, Krishna says, "The sarva dharma parita jama mekam chandam raja ham tam sarva paape bhayo moksha mi matsukaha." Give up everything and surrender to me, and I will protect you from all sinful reactions. Now, Bhaji Bo Bolia Ishe, the living entity, when he is in the womb of his mother, he experiences intense pain. In the third canto of the Bhagavata, this point has been explained in great detail. I've had the opportunity of talking to doctors in Washington, Canada, India, so many places. They all confirm that medical science doesn't know. But the child in the mother's womb begins to kick after six months of pregnancy. The reason is the child, when he gets, regains consciousness, he finds himself in a very painful situation. After all, after the child dies, he just enters into another womb, and there he goes. He goes to sleep for six months. Just like in many parts of the world, the karmis they go to sleep on Friday, and some of them don't even get up till Monday. I knew some people in Canada who would do that. Go to sleep Friday night, get up Monday morning. But the body always gets up at the same time. So death is nothing but extended sleep. So when he comes to consciousness, the child finds, oh, here I am in a bag with a stool, urine, blood, mucus, all these noxious things, and the child finds himself in a very uncomfortable position. Now, if the child has done past activity in the past. Then, in that uncomfortable position, he promises the Lord something, and that is, when I come out of the mother's womb, I'll definitely follow your instruction. But when he comes out of the mother's womb, he completely forgets that promise. I'm sure we all have experienced in mature life that sometimes when you are in difficulty, you make all sorts of promises, and when you recover, you forget that promise. Even the thief, when he's in the police. He promised the militia he won't commit crime again, but the moment he gets out, he starts to commit the crime again. So the living entity, when he comes out of the mother's womb, his parents, relatives, friends, they just entangle him, and as a result, he forgets his promise. Tomare loite ami aino avatara ami bina bandhu are kia che tomara. Now, Dr. Bhakti Nath says, I have descended. Why? I have descended specially to save you. I have descended to save you, and I am your only real friend. So there's so many people in society who claim they are our friends. They claim they are our well-wisher. Your friends claim they are your well-wisher. Your parents claim they are your well-wisher, and your so-called political leaders they also claim they are your well-wisher. The politician when he's fighting for election, he always says, "Give me a vote, and I will do exactly what you want for your benefit." The only person who is your well-wisher is one who is engaged in helping you understand your relationship with God. The others are not your well-wisher. They may claim they are your well-wisher. Thakur Bhakti said, "Tamare loite me. I have appeared specially for you." So the Veda Charyas and the Lord they appear. Why? Pari tanaya sadhu nam bina shacha duskatam dharma sanstha panar thaya sambhavami yogi yogi. They appear from time to time. Why? To establish the principles of religion. So they establish. They appear to establish the principles of religion. So the Veda Chari is also here with the same goal. Therefore, the devotees of the Lord, they are only concerned about the essential principles of life. They are not interested in worldly issues. So this has been nicely reflected even in the prayers of Pralad Maharaj. We won't discuss Pralad Maharaj's prayers today. Because tomorrow, Lord Narsingha Dev's birthday will be a more appropriate day for discussing it. So, Thakur Bhakti Nath claims he is the only real friend. This doesn't mean that only Thakur Bhakti Nath is the true is the only friend. What this means is any devotee of the Lord who is going to present the teachings of the Lord to the conditioned soul, he is the true friend. Somebody who is just flattering you and encouraging you on the path of sense enjoyment is not your friend. Somebody who just flatters you just to get something out of you is not your real friend. But somebody who tells you clearly who you are and what you should be doing, he's your friend. So Vaishnava never compromises from the truth. The truth may have to be presented in a palatable manner, but he always presents nothing but the truth. The truth has to be presented in a palatable manner. Just like when you go out preaching, you don't tell the materialists that you are like dogs, horses, camels, and ants. So just because the Bhagavatam says, "Swabidvara hostra kare." You don't go on some kid and say, 
My dear Sabaks and Chad, please take this Canadian. <laughs> you may pres- you have to present the point that the activities of the materialists are like animals, so the truth has to be presented in a palatable manner. Like Prabhupada, when he went to America, he told the young people, you Americans are the future hope of the country. But you young people have to understand how life has to be properly utilized. And in a palatable manner, he told them what the real message is. So the truth has to be spoken, but in a pleasant manner. So therefore, Dr. Bhaktivinoda says, I am your only real friend, because the real friend is only talking about the real business of life. He says, I have brought a special medicine for you. You know, when you ask everyone, they say, Kak de la, everyone says, Rochan Khara Show. How about, isn't it? Everyone says, I'm okay, and how are you? It's a standard reply. But Prabhupada explained that everybody is suffering from heart disease. What is our heart disease? Who knows that? Unlimited material desires in the heart. So many material desires in the heart that we are all heart patients. <laughs> <laughs> so we are all heart patients, Prabhupada said. So Thakur Bhaktivinoda says, I have brought a medicine to remove your disease. And what is this medicine? The holy name of Krishna. The holy name of Krishna is the real medicine. Once I remember... In 1968, there was a doctor who had graduated from the Meghul Medical College. Meghul Medical College in Montreal is the best, uh, med- one of the best medical schools in North America. So he had just passed with very good marks and he became a full-time Brahmachari devotee in the Montreal Temple. So the medical, the Meghul Medical Journal came to interview him. They said, you just graduated from this medical school and now you become ashamed that Hare Krishna, are you crazy? What's wrong? In America, doctors make $100,000 a year minimum. They're the richest people in society, not like here. Everybody there is so diseased that they go to a doctor 10 times for everything. So, this devotee in the interview said, Krishna consciousness is a supreme preventive medicine. So, they published a big article. Krishna consciousness is the supreme preventive medicine. And in the article they said, Medicine can cure diseases, but unless you give up sinful desires, your disease will remain and you'll remain entangled in material existence. So, Krishna consciousness is the supreme medicine. And all of you are qualified spiritual doctors. Vashi Bracha, all of you are doctors. So, the Dr. Bhaktivinoda says, I have brought this medicine, take this medicine and you will be cured. So, he says, Bhakti the Prabhu Charane Priya. Thakur Bhaktivinoda is falling in the feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and begging him. And what is Thakur Bhaktivinoda begging? Please may I have the holy name. Please may I have the holy name. So Thakur Bhaktivinoda says, all of you should fall at the feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and beg him. Please may you have the holy name. So we should beg for the holy name. If you beg for the holy name, then you will get the holy name. Do not take the holy name for granted. If you become disrespectful to the holy name, then you can lose the holy name. Disrespectful to the holy name means committing ten, committing the ten offenses. So the holy name is our most valuable asset. And the Lord especially incarnated in this age to give us the holy name. Actually, the holy name has existed from the beginning of creation also. It's not that Lord Chaitanya created the Hare Krishna mantra. He just popularized it as a principal medium of self-realization in this age of Kali. It is said, Kritaya Dhyayato Vishnom Tretayo Yajato Makhe Vapare Parichayaram Kalota Hare Kirtana. This is a statement from the Vishnu Purana. The translation is as follows. Kritya Dhyayato Vishnu. How many ages are there according to the Vedic history? What are the four ages? Satya Yoga and then Satya Yoga, Kritya Yoga, Dwarpa Yoga and Kali Yoga. These are the four ages. Now in Satya Yoga, the principal medium of self-realization was meditation on the Lord. In Satya Yoga, people could meditate up to 60,000 years. You may say, how is that possible? How can somebody meditate for so long? The lifespan in Satya Yoga was 100,000 years. Valmiki, the compiler of the Ramayana, meditated for 60,000 years. So the principal medium was in Satya Yoga was meditation on the Lord. Then came Sreta Yoga. In Sreta Yoga, the principal means was very elaborate sacrifices. In those sacrifices, you would need many brahmanas, 
lot of grains, malako, mias, uh, no, butter, <laughs> masla, and who could afford it today? And if you have a fire sacrifice in your house every day, the neighbors will complain like anything. <laughs> if they complain about your kirtan, they'll complain million times more once they have see that you're doing a fire sacrifice all day in your house every day. And even meditation is not possible in this age. Where will you go and sit in seclusion? Where? Come here. Even if you go and sit on top of the Himalayas at 28,000 feet, the planes are flying at 35,000 feet. So by the time you try getting to top of the Himalayas, you may slip so many times you won't even get there. <laughs> then came Dwarpa Yoga. And in Dwarpa Yoga, the system of self-realization was very elaborate offering to the Lord in the temple. People would come to the temple make many rich offerings. But today you cannot do that. If you told all the visitors who are here now that you can only come to the temple if you bring minimum 500 uh, rubles offering to Gornitai, very few of you would come. And if people started coming and giving 500 rubles, then the government would say, oh, this money belongs to us, not to you. And if the government would, wouldn't say that, the robbers would say. The robbers would say, you people have too much money, come on, let us steal. So in Kali Yoga, the lifespan was 100,000 years. In Tirtha Yoga, it was 10,000 years. In Dwarpa Yoga, it was 1,000 years. And in Kali Yoga, it's a maximum of 100 years. So in Kali Yoga, the process of self-realization by the causes mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has been subsidized. You understand subsidized? Now that your economy is going to be a capitalistic economy, you will see that one day they will sell something for 100 rubles, then after Christmas they'll have a sale and reduce it to 10 rubles. Just like previously, in communism, the government used to subsidize everything, so everything was cheap. Now that that subsidy has been taken away, everything has become expensive. So the process of self-realization in this age has also been subsidized. What you could get by meditating was 60,000 years in Satya Yoga. What you could get by uh, by performing yagyas for 10,000 years in Treta Yoga. What you could get by offering rich sacrifices in temples for 1,000 years in Dwarpa Yoga. The same thing you can get in Kali Yoga just by chanting Hare Krishna for whatever the duration of your life is. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Dr. Bhaktivinoda says, please pray for the holy name and keep the holy name with you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, I thought since many of the sankhas and devotees are here, they should meditate on the philosophy of Thakur Bhaktivinoda's song. So I told you, I'll tell you some stories. So I'll tell you one very famous story about Thakur Bhaktivinoda. Only one story because I want to leave in 20 minutes or so. So, at the time Thakur Bhaktivinoda was a magistrate, there was one bogus yogi. This yogi was very powerful. He was telling everybody his incarnation of Krishna. And he used to flirt with everybody's daughter and wife and sister. So, many people were against him. But everybody was scared of touching him. Everybody was scared of him. The government, the police, the judges, everybody. He was living like a king in the middle of the forest. And he had hundreds of, you know, you may call mafia type of men there protecting him. (laughs) It is said that even the Britishers had ordered the army to go there. And the army got scared to go near him. Because the soldiers, when they came in the near the forest, they saw that the yogi was so powerful. They said, no, 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 we can't go in it. The Thakur Bhakti you now decided, Thakur Bhakti knew that this man was a cheater. Just like there are so many people who claim to be God, but devotees, now these guys are not God. You've heard of Sai Baba? Yeah, he's well known in your country. Anyway, he has big, long hair, does magic, but there are so many people in India who think he's God. So, Thakur Bhaktino took the police force with him and he went to the yogi. Police camp in the middle of the forest. But what he did, he kept the soldiers sitting a little bit away. And he alone walked to the yogi. So the yogi was really very powerful. He said, I know why you have come here, Mr. Datta. Mr. Datta was Thakur Bhaktino's karmi name, if you want to call it. So he said, I know why you have come here to arrest me. And you have brought your police force with you that are standing at a distance. And if you try and arrest me, all of you, so of your soldiers will die and you will die. Thakur Bhaktivinoda was convinced that this man is bogus. So Thakur Bhaktivinoda ordered his soldiers fully arrest him. And they dragged him. It was away from Jagannath Puri and they brought him and put him in prison. When they put him in prison, every day his disciples were coming and demonstrating 
Release our guru, release our guru. This all his Thakur Bhakti Nath friends also told him, you have made a big mistake in in imprisoning this man who is an incarnation of Vishnu. And at the same time, Thakur Bhakti Nath's wife and twelve children all felt very sick. They were about to die. They were so sick. Everybody started telling Thakur Bhakti Nath, this is happening because you have put Vishnu in jail. But, but uh, Thakur Bhakti Nath refused to budge. So then the court trial was started of, Thak, of this uh, bogus yogi. Now Thakur Bhaktinath's family fell ill, but then they gradually recovered. And on the day that Thakur Bhaktinath, it's a long story, but I'm just giving you a summary presentation. So on the day Thakur Bhaktinath was supposed to write his present his judgment, his, right, his hand was paining and he could not even lift his hand to touch the ruchka. He was supposed to deliver the judgment in the court at 1030 until 8 o'clock, he could not even move his hand. But Thakur Bhaktivinoda was determined to try and get the judgment out. At 8 o'clock, he picked up the strength to write the judgment. And he reached the court just in time to deliver the judgment. So as soon as the judgment was announced, all his followers, they started shouting and they, that, you know, that they've done a big mistake in convicting Mahavishnu to jail. And then there was one British lawyer in the court. He had read in one book that the yogis keep all their strength in their long hair. This yogi had very long hair. So as they were, as the police was taking him from the courtroom after the judgment was heard, was announced, the British lawyer ran from behind, took scissors and cut his hair off. And as soon as his hair was cut, that mystic yogi, he lost all his power. And he fell on the floor and he died. And then everyone could see that he was bogus and Thakur Bhakti Nod was right. Thakur Bhakti Nod was a very bold preacher. When Thakur Bhakti Nod rose to prominence, at that time the Brahmin community in India was very strong. These were people who just claimed they were Brahmins by birth and not in practice. So these Brahmins were completely against becoming a Brahmin by qualification. They were just saying Brahmin is only by birth. So Thakur Bhakti Nod was very actually preaching against them. Once Thakur Bhaktinur was invited to give a speech to the Brahmins, he was a leading up for the leading person who was opposing Brahmins on the basis of birth. So Bhaktinur Thakur was sick at that time, so he wrote a speech and he sent Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati to deliver that speech. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati started that speech by first praising the Brahmins. So the Brahmins were very happy that Thakur Bhaktinur has now surrendered to their viewpoint. But then after it was a staff, after having praised the Brahmins, then Bhakti Vinod Thakur pointed out how one has to be a Brahmin only by qualification and not by birth. So Thakur Bhakti Vinod in his writings had predicted that one day in Mayapur, people from every country of the world, he especially mentioned Russians, Russians, Americans, Britishers, they've all come to Mayapur and chant and dance. Because when Thakur Bhakti Vinod was on the planet, there was no Soviet Union, there was no Russia. And he had started the presentation of Krishna consciousness to the Western countries. In 1896, Thakur Bhakti sent his first book on the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to McGill University in Montreal. And 1896 was the year that, who appeared in that year? Shri Yeah, 1896 was the year that Prabhupada appeared on the planet. So Thakur Bhakti planted the seed of devotional service. Actually, I'll tell you a real story. It's a joke. But it's a real story. This book that Thakur Bhaktinath said to sent to Mekil University in Montreal, it was in their library till 1967. Just see, from 1896 to 1967, the book was in the library. In 1967, the Iskon Temple was opened in Montreal. So some devotees found out that there's a book in the library which was sent in 1896 by Thakur Bhaktinath. So one devotee went and borrowed that book from the library and never returned. <laughs> so till 1967, that book was there. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so Thakur Bhaktinath, I was saying Thakur Bhaktinath planted the seed of devotional service in the, all over the world, which was further fanned by Bhakti Siddhantaji and further expanded on a grand scale by Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, it's quarter to nine now. Do you have any questions? I can take on questions for five, for five minutes. Any questions? Vidura Prabhu, I must say your center is getting better. Now you have written Sarangana Prabhu, such an experienced man. You two are working together. <laughs> You are coming here, and because of that, we are flourishing. Well, every time I come here, I come to Moscow, I come to your center. And 
But I hope you will have a sound system by the time I come next time. Otherwise, I will get you a sound system. I told you that I've ordered a Prabhupada Murti for your center. It should be coming soon. But you need a bigger temple room. We have a few more walls that you can break. <laughs> you have broken quite a few walls. Maybe you can, if you have, don't have any more walls to break, you can start breaking some pata locks and polias. <laughs> Are you ready for that, Vidura? Pata locks and polias. So, are there any questions from your devotees? Yes. Sometimes she's wondering, is it temptation of Maya or is it the test of Krishna? How we can distinguish these things? What is temptation of Maya and what is taste of Krishna? You no, know, some, 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 uh, hap- uh, something is happening and she cannot distinguish this. Is it is the temptation of Maya or is it some tests of Krishna? Not a very clear question. Whatever is happening, it's happening due to the result of the working of material nature. Based on your past karma, you're entitled, to, you're getting your suffering and happiness. Question is not very clear. We cannot think that if I have to suffer something in the past karma, it's happening because Krishna wants to do some leela with me. Okay, what from? Sometimes it's happening that uh, some devotee can uh, help a lot to, de- to develop the Christian constantly, but after a while he, he is uh, um, uh, leaving the Eastern movement. Uh, in which uh, way we should uh, behave to him? If somebody leaves the movement? Yeah, after helping a lot. We should always be respectful and grateful to anybody who has done given help. Even when we devotees would do a small thing, Prabhupada would tell us, thank you, ten times. Even when we would take a glass of water to him, he would say, expressive thank you. So anybody who has helped serve this movement, even if he falls into Maya later, we should still be grateful for what he has done. But it doesn't mean that the person is in Maya, we'll tell him, okay, come on, you get, come tomorrow and give the Bhagavatam class. Bhagavatam class, you can only ask to that person to give who is practicing Krishna consciousness and good standing. In such kind of uh, uh, Bhagavatam, in, in, in his purport, Srila Prabhupada states that uh, Sanatana Goswami, uh, during a long time, war, uh, was in the womb of his ma- mother. Why? No, so, Sanatana Goswami, Shukadev Goswami. Eta niya Sanatana, eta Shukadev. Why? Shukadev Goswami, even though he was self-realized, he did not want to take the risk of being exposed to the illusory energy. So he was refusing to come out of the mother's womb because he was scared. If he came out, Maya may not catch him. So Vyasadeva had to come to Krishna and he told Krishna his problem. Then Lord Krishna personally went and promised Vyasa Shukadeva Goswami, Maya will not touch you. Then Shukadeva Goswami came out of the mother's womb. You want to know what he did as soon as he came out of the, came out of the mother's womb? Done. He left home and his father Vyasadev ran behind him. Vyasadev said, I was waiting for you for such a long time, son. Where are you going? So then Shukadev Goswami created a double. The double came back home and Shukadev went on traveling. He passed the uh, uh, He heard that the devotees of his school are openly uh, 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 addressed uh, as a servant of the servant of the servant of Gopi. Why is Gopi? We don't say that servant of servant of servant of the gopi at the paper. I heard it for the first time. That means servant of the servant of the servant of the servant. That means the devotee's attitude is of one of the servitor. In other words, we don't want to be master. In material world, everybody wants to be a master. But when you're a servant, it is more beautiful. So Prabhu, tomorrow is Lord Nasingadev's birthday. All of you know tomorrow is the fast day. Tomorrow the Bhagavatam class will be at 7, uh, 7.30. Very good. Man. We could have the class here, but your temple room is very small. Once you break few more walls, then you can start having the class here. <laughs> you have to break the police and the pathologs. So. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama, Rama, Hare Hare